Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Adash Anaparedi. I'm an orthopedic and joint replacement surgeon at Sunshine Hospitals and I also specialize in unicondylar knee replacements. Today I'd like to talk to you about the knee joint, arthritis of the knee joint and total knee replacements as well as partial knee replacement. The knee joint is one of the most important joints in the body because it, the whole body weight is taken by the knee joint. So this is the model of the knee joint. Now if I move away this uh, tendon over here, so this is the femur bone on the top, this is the tibia bone. In between we have different components of the joint. So this shiny smooth area is known as the cartilage and these rubbery areas which you see here are the menisci and in between you have the ligaments and on in the front of the knee joint you have the kneecap. So what is the function of this cartilage? So this smooth area which I told you is the cartilage, this if you take the analogy of a car it acts as a shock absorber. So all the pressure of the body or the weight of the body which falls on the knee joint, the pressure is absorbed by this cartilage. So knee arthritis is basically a condition in which this cartilage starts to wear away. Again, if you take the analogy of a car, just like a car tire, the more we use it, the faster the tire wears out. It's the same thing for a knee joint. Once the cartilage starts to wear out, this condition is known as osteoarthritis of the knee. Now if you see this model over here, this bluish area is the cartilage and there are various stages for osteoarthritis. And the final stage of arthritis looks like this, where it's completely worn out. If you can see, the bone edges are now exposed and they start to rub against each other, causing the friction, the pain. So osteoarthritis of the knee joint occurs in four different stages. In the first two stages, the amount of cartilage wear is minimal. And the third stage, obviously it's more. And the fourth stage is a complete erosion of a cartilage, leading to bone on bone arthritis. So this part of the model is probably of stage four, you could say, because the bone is completely devoid of cartilage. So how do you treat the various stages? Now, stage one and stage two can be treated conservatively, that is without a surgery or without a procedure. First is medication for the pain. There are some medications which are known as glucosamines, which increase the strength of the cartilage. A very important part of this treatment is uh, physiotherapy. When the quadriceps muscle strength increases, it, the muscle takes the pressure of the body, the load of the body, and prevents it from falling on the cartilage. The next thing is lifestyle modifications. We have to prevent the patient from sitting, squatting on the floor, reduce the uh, climbing of stairs. And there are some injections which people do use, but that's only a temporary treatment. Now, once you come to stage four of osteoarthritis, the cartilage is completely eroded. The conservative measures are basically to avoid proceeding from stage one or stage two to the next stage, stage three or stage four. You cannot reverse this. So, but once you've come to stage four, it's usually required to go for a procedure, a knee replacement surgery. Let's first talk about total knee replacement or total knee arthroplasty as we call it. So in this procedure, what we do is we shave off the arthritic or the worn away bone from the femur as well as the tibia and we replace it with a very smooth surfaced metal on the femur as well as tibia and in between we place this plastic which is known as polyethylene. So once we do this replacement, we regain a smooth functioning knee joint with the proper movements, with minimal pain and the restoration of the knee joint space. The knee joint on an x-ray looks like this. I mean, there's a bone on the top femur, there's a bone in the bottom, the tibia. The cartilage is not seen in x-ray, so you see it as a gap. Okay, a minimal amount of gap should be there between the two bones. But in knee arthritis, because of the wearing away of the cartilage, the gap starts to reduce and in stage four, there's hardly any gap left. So once the knee replacement surgery is done, the gap is regained and we get the free movement. Now I'd like to tell you a little bit about partial knee replacement or as we call it the unicondylar knee arthroplasty. Now if you see this model over here, this is a knee joint where the cartilage is worn out uniformly around the surface of the femur. But this particular model, you, if you can see, the wear of the cartilage is only restricted to the inner side of the joint. This is known as the medial compartment. So a lot of, most knee joints start the wear on the medial side. But by the time the patient comes to us, the wear usually has spread across just like this knee. But for some patients, the wear is only restricted to the middle side of the knee joint. Now, if we go ahead with a total knee replacement like this model over here, we're cutting off the damaged area as well as the good normal area over here. So if you again go back to the analogy of a car, it's like when you have one worn out tire, it's like replacing all the four tires just for that one tire. So in this kind of situation, we perform a surgery known as a partial knee replacement. The reason we say partial is because we're only removing the medial side of the joint. We're only replacing the medial side which is damaged over here. And we do not touch the lateral, the normal part of the knee joint. If you see this model here, 
this lateral part has been completely left alone and this is the medial part of the joint which was damaged which we have replaced with the implant. If you compare this with the total knee, you can see the difference. So what are the advantages of this partial knee replacement? So firstly, it requires a much smaller incision. So because we are not replacing the whole knee joint, we don't need to uh, expose the whole joint. So we don't need to take a completely larger incision. We just need to expose the medial part of the knee joint which is a much smaller incision. Secondly, because we are not touching the, the unaffected part of the knee, this the lateral side of the knee joint, we are basically saving a lot more of the natural unaffected bone. If the patients for neurocondylar knee replacement or partial knee replacement are selected correctly, they are very very happy with the partial knee replacement and they can live lifelong with that particular replacement. If by chance the arthritis does progress to a stage 4 arthritis, it is always possible to convert this into a total knee replacement as well. So, there is it is not like once we have done that surgery, we have lost the chance of doing a total knee replacement. Now, in the past, it was believed that uh, certain patients were not the right candidates for a unicornular knee replacement. They, it was believed that obese patients and patients with very high levels of activity, it was believed that they are not suitable for a unicornular or partial knee replacement. But all these have been proven uh, to be false. Like the recent studies have shown that the knee, partial knee replacements can be done in these categories of patients as long as certain criteria are met. On the x-ray, there should be, the bone should be touching the other bone, but only on the medial side, not on the lateral side. Thank you. So, this was about knee arthritis, total knee replacement and uh, partial knee replacement. If you do have any doubts or queries, please do uh, contact us through our website, sunshinehospitals.com. Thank you very much. Sunshine, it's